How long does it take to orbit the Earth? It turns out, that depends on which way you're going. But wait, you say, how could that possibly be? Surely the Earth doesn't know which way you're going. And you'd be right, but the space-time does. The Earth, like many things in the universe, is spinning. And one of the fascinating predictions of Einstein's general relativity is that matter drags space-time around with it. It's for this reason that, when you're sufficiently close to a spinning black hole, you can't help but rotate with the black hole. For more details, check out my video on frame dragging linked in the description. So even though the Earth isn't a black hole, it still does drag the space-time around it a little bit. So if you're orbiting around the equator of the Earth in one direction, you'll be going more with the rotation of the space-time, and if you orbit in the other direction, you go against the rotation of the space-time. Surprisingly, it takes more time to make a full orbit when you are orbiting with the direction of Earth's rotation compared to orbiting against it. This is called the gravitomagnetic clock effect. And yes, I know flat earthers will be delighted that I said that. One way to understand this result is that when moving prograde, i.e. in the same direction as the Earth's rotation, you're moving more slowly relative to the underlying space-time. And what we learn from special relativity is that the slower you're moving, the more your clock ticks. Whereas in the retrograde case, you must be moving ever so slightly faster relative to the underlying space-time, and so your clock ticks fewer times per orbit. This isn't a perfect analogy though, because here there is a preferred reference frame, and thus there's no twin paradox phenomenon. Now for the question I'm sure you're asking, how big is this effect for two orbits the exact same height above the equator of the Earth? The orbital periods will differ by about 137 nanoseconds. In principle, this is measurable with current technology, but it's really hard to get right, because the orbital time also heavily depends on height above the Earth. Meaning, to measure this effect, you would need two satellites with orbital height agreeing to less than a millimeter. And that's a tall order. 